break where the view is nothing less than phenomenal for how I express and project from my abdominal. The only view better both my daddy and my mama know. No living parents, my sons give me balance. My wife is my serenity, this mic is my identity. The world is foul enough, that's why I write without obscenities. Provoking danger with broken language and spoken anguish. Begging to get hurt, why would you ask to go through changes? Yes, Lord, life's a chessboard, master the angles. Control the tempo, be the one who holds the info. Acknowledge, acknowledge is just as deadly as machete swings. When spoken, the truth is as potent as that meta yin. While others swear the style is free, I just let it ring. Our time is undervalued, so just make us better kings. My fans on my shoulder, reaching after better things. Today I take the shot, for them I'd rather set the screen. My mama told me follow my dreams. My daddy told me get it by any means. Stand tall, make a bow to a king. But I've evolved, you can see the result. Look in my eyes when you speak in the God. Life and for those who we caught up in using what I was taught with the muse. I guess they call it proving I'm more than an artist. Penciling out my darkest while stenciling out a harvest. And storing what gets me from A to B, just like garages. Instrumental with collages. Envision what I've been drawn. Broadway to give you rhythm like the great lean on. So been thrown, found comfort in the storm. Find peace and norm when you see them others perform. Organized chaos, I'll cast it like hey, ya. I want to talk to the legend. Once you learn words, you can kind of rhyme, become like a rapper. You can kind of rhyme anything that's going on. So what you saying? This is swishing. What? Penetrating creative. It's my vibe. I'm fresh to death when I dress in my Fraser. I'm tailored with the suit and tie. Player, player. From head to toe, man, I'm so clean. Balling out, looking like I'm on a nigga. I'm Nina. I'm 365, fresh fly with different gear. Clyde, what that Clyde. mean? Different outfit every day of the year. I'm the one that bought the G when they made the Q. You get it? That's another suit. Them tailor shoes, my nigga logos, colors orange, blue. That first NBA player that bought the rose through. Fedora on when they label me the style guard. That MVP all star player. In point guard, 1975, yeah. you better check the ride yeah. With no tailors or nights, I had the Puma Glide I'm custom made, living like the NBA pro man I stay fitted, get Victor, I need some more hands My dress code stay normal like a fashion show So when I step on the run, I gotta walk slow So daddy cool when I move in a slow run And my closet side look like I stepped on the city bus I'm fresh to death when I dress in my Fraser. I'm tailored with the suit and tie. Player, player. From head to toe, man, I'm so clean. Balling out, looking like I'm on the Knicks team. Yo, party people in the place to be, what's good? It's your number one Chief Rock Knicks Universal main man, Uncle Freezy, and welcome to the premiere Knicks in the Nighttime show. Again, I am Uncle Freezy. And I am ready to rock, man. Thank y'all for coming through. Uh, Andios is in the building. It's good to see you. Good to see you, brother. The son of the legend, Carrie Cox, is in the building. Ivory 10 is in the building. Salute, salute, salute. What's good, everybody? That was my main man. That was my brother from another, Jay Boogie. Jay Boogie got some bangers, y'all. I, I be wanting to play them all. You know what I'm saying? I be wanting to wanting to play them all, man. So salute to Jay Boogie. You know what I'm saying? Coming through, providing us. You know what I'm saying? With that real hip hop, hip hop. Talking about those Knicks. How y'all feeling out there? How y'all feeling out there, y'all? How y'all feeling out there, man? So we're a day away. From that heartbreaking loss to OKC, but things all with the all. So we got Miami on the schedule, 
And before I start to talk about Miami, what I want to do is is look at some of y'all comments, see what it is that's on y'all mind. See what it is that's on y'all mind. And then... Let me see here. Where is it? Boston beat Charlotte. Memphis beat Detroit. Indy beat Brooklyn. Orlando beat Portland. Atlanta beat Chicago. Phoenix beat New Orleans. Let me look at these stand-ins real quick just to get some up-to-date stuff. All right. Cleveland jumped back ahead of us. Um, by one game in the win column, right? And I just want to check one other thing just real quick. I should know all this stuff by heart as much as we talk about this stuff, y'all. So the Knicks have eight games remaining, right? The Knicks are at Miami, And then at home against Sacramento, and then at Chicago, at Milwaukee, at Chicago, at Boston, and then we come home for Brooklyn and Chicago to end the season. So the Knicks have eight games remaining, and five of them are on the road. Hit him up is in the building, and hit him up says you can forget about them them fifty wins. Mm, I don't know. So the Knicks just need to go five and three, bro. The Knicks can't go five and three the rest of the way. The Knicks can't beat Chicago three times and Brooklyn and then pull out a one win against either Boston, Milwaukee, Sacramento or Miami? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. JJ, I'm not talking to you, brother. I'm not talking to any more Mets fans, bro. I'm not talking to another Mets fan until until we win the World Series. That's it. I'm I'm not talking. And no, you can't make me speak with another Mets fan until we win the World Series. King Embert is in the building. Snipes Entertainment is in the building. And JJ says, if we lose to Miami, we're just two games from the play-in with seven games to go. Daniel Berry Sports Highlights is in the building. D-Block, what's good, man? I see you. King Ibert says blah, 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 something. I can't read it. It looks like looks like hieroglyphics. King Ibert, I think your keyboard is stuck. King, King Ibert typed something in. I can't read it. Maybe his keyboard is sticking. Right? And then Kerry Cox says something, 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 uh, something about a keyboard being stuck. I can't tell. I can't tell what it is, man. You know, no no shade or what. I'm sure it was an important message you had, but I just I can't read it, bro. Yeah, yeah. Um, how important is 50 wins to us? Just to start the conversation off tonight, we just hanging out. No real, no real pressing issues, man. It's the end of the season. The Knicks are gonna make the playoffs. Nothing, nothing, a you know, it, it, yeah, we ain't killing nothing and nothing ain't dying. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, nobody move, nobody get hurt. You know what I'm saying? So it's one of them nights, whatever it is that y'all want to talk about, let's get it. How important is, is 50 wins to y'all, though? The Knicks winning, winning 50 games. Is it very important to you? OG Ananobi is out for t- um, tomorrow. Well, I guess it's today's game. Mitch is a game time decision. 
but Miami has Tyler Hero out, Duncan Robinson game time decision, Joe Fitch, Rosie a game time decision, and Caleb Martin is a game time decision. So. Let me see here what the, what the chat is saying. So, B. Willis is in the building. Yeah, I think so. Pastor J is in the building. Salute to the saint. Ivory 10 says, am I the only one worried about paying OG? That's a great question. How about we talk about that? How worried are you guys about paying OG and an OB in, in the um in the summer? Are you guys really, really, really concerned about paying OG and an OB? Snipes Entertainment is in the building. I see Pastor Jay in the building and I feel compelled to tell a a St. John's joke, right? I, I, I feel compelled to say something about St. John's. Do St. John's still have a basketball team, by the way? I mean, I don't know. Since the Big East dissolved or whatever, I don't know if they, I don't know. I don't keep up with with college basketball up in, in, in the, you know, the East Coast or whatever, because usually teams aren't really that good. Like, on, I'm talking about on a national scale. Um, does St. John St. John still have men's basketball? I'm just asking, man. I, I mean, I don't know. I'm not trying to start. I'm not trying to start anything. <laughs> I'm not trying to start any any um any trouble. B. Willis says we got a sniper that being used the wrong way. Um, forty four. That that may be true also. <clears throat> Kerry Cox says, yeah, they they got Rick pa Rick Patino. Okay. Is Rick Patino a point guard? Is Rick Patino gonna be in a draft? Snipes says he's getting 40 mil a season. I hope y'all not talking about Patino. Ivory 10 says the fact that it's easy to say pay OG means it's potentially more dangerous of a move. Nah, bro. Nah, bro. We got to relax on the OG stuff, bro. Nah, we got to relax on, on the OG stuff. Pay that man the max and the max number of years and deal with the injury stuff, period. Right? If the conver if the Knicks start to have internal conversations about concerns about um, OG and Anobi's um, injury history, if they start, if you hear those narratives about OG and Anobi's injury history, it means the trade that they made was a dumb one. Right? How do you trade away two young players and a draft pick for a guy that you're not sure that you even want? Who pays that much for rentals? Fitzroy is in the building. Salute. Who, who, what, what front office in the NBA would pay? Two promising young players, <clears throat> though they were both struggling, right? Who would pay two promising young players and a draft pick for a guy that only plays 19 games? If you let OG and Anobi walk, 
if you let OG Ananobi walk and and you did not win 50 games your entire tenure as a front office, I mean 50 games in a season. You had four, you had four years so far to win 50 games, and you, you've not done it. The first couple of years, we'll say, okay, one year was cut short because it was 72, 72 games, right? I just I, I I can't see I can't see where the Knicks won't re-sign OG and Anobi to the max number of years and the max num uh, max dollar amount with no options. If you're the Knicks, two hundred million dollars is a real thing for OG. I re ten agrees. I re ten is like exactly that's crazy, bro. I re ten agrees with me. I re ten says that's crazy, bro. Max, yes, give that five years, forty million dollars. That's that's the going rate. And if he only plays sixty five games a year, then deal with it. Because in those 65 games, the Knicks are going to go 47 and 18. In those 65 games, the Knicks are going to go like 48 and 17. Right? In those other 17 games, if you can't go 9 and 8, 8 and 9, that's not OG and Inobi's fault. That's the front office's fault. JJ says five for 150 as, as if he's talking to Emmanuel quickly. Like, yeah, quickly. We're going to give you five for 150. <laughs> Bro, nah, man. The same stuff, the same stuff that y'all see with OG and Anobi, his agency sees it as well. And then on top of all of that, on top of all of that, if you let OG and Anobi walk to somebody with Philadelphia, not only do you not have OG and Anobi, He's playing against you with your rival. Pay that man. Pay that man. Oh yeah, hey everybody, I got to I got to be better at this man. So um um hit the like button. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Um, you know, we still we trying to build and grow and and everything like that. So yeah, yeah. You gotta pay that man 40 million a year. 40 million a year is the going rate for an OG and an OB. Somewhere in that neighborhood, it's gonna be somewhere in that neighborhood between 37 and 42. And Knicks fans, you just gonna have to deal with it. It's not your money. Deal with it. And and I know and I know some of us are in a a lottery team mindset where we feel like, you know, you can't pay anybody, you know, 40 million dollars. Oh my god, 40 million dollars a year, that's too much money. Yeah, that was too much money when when we were a lottery team. If you want to win a championship, you have to be in the mindset that you have to pay premium prices for premium players. I mean, the mere fact that, that y'all are suggesting anything under four years, four years and under, OG and OB ain't taking that. Right? OG's not taking that because you're going to make him a free agent at a weird time. 
right? Uh, you, you're going to have uh, um, OG Ananobi be a free agent at 31? No, he's not doing that. He's going to get as many years as he can. OG Ananobi is going to resign for five years, $200 million. Somewhere in that range, somewhere between five for 190 to five for 210. Right? It's just what it is. And if you're a Knicks fan, why would you even play with it? And we're, we're, are you not impressed with the product you see from the Knicks with OG Ananobi on the floor? Why would you even tempt fate? Why would you even tempt fate? Have you not been a loser long enough? You know what OG Ananobi is going to bring to the table when he plays. You already know. You already know what it is. Your core going forward, whether you like it or not, your core three is Jalen Brunson, Julius Randle, and OG Ananobi. That's the core going forward, period. It's what it is. And, and, and I know we're thinking like, yo, maybe because it's New York, we can do a big four. No, teams don't do big fours. It's not Uno, right? It is not Uno. The ghetto intellect is in the building. Salute. Chat, I'm um, chat. I'm um, I'm um, I'm um, I'm begging you to think like a championship contender. You can't, we can't think like lottery teams anymore. If you want premium talent, you have to pay premium prices. It's just what it is. You know what OG Ananobi does when he's on the floor. OG Ananobi came back for a three-game stretch and was probably about 65%. And we won all those games, or two-game stretch. And we won those two games with him on the floor, and he was 65%, maybe. Maybe 50%. And Knicks fans are like, yeah, give him four years. A hundred million? No, he ain't take. No, he ain't taking that. No. We gotta stop thinking like the side chick, right? We we have to stop thinking. Of, we have to stop thinking like like desperate housewives of Westchester. That's not us anymore, right? The Knicks are something. You've seen it. You've seen it. You guys are are not only have you come along for the ride, some of you guys have initiated the ride. Some of you guys have initiated this confidence in this team. Some of you guys, no doubt, some of you guys that have, have been in chats and stuff being super positive and helping others get out of that negative, that negative space that we existed in for years just by seeing a positive outcome. And just by providing a, a positive outcome, just saying, just putting it out there in the atmosphere, just by being positive about stuff means you're hopeful about something. And OG and Anobi is part of that reason why you are hopeful. OG and Anobi is going to get the bag, and we should be happy for him. Because think about it, if if OG Ananobi doesn't get the bag, you want to give that money to Daquan Jeffries? Them pennies that's left over? Them pennies that's left over, we legit going to sign Taj Gibson again to a, a, a guaranteed contract and then cut him and then give him um, two, two, eight, two, ten days and then let him sign with 
the Fort Wayne Pistons. That's that's what you want. Make the best use of the money. OG and Anobi is going to get paid. Julius Randle is going to get paid something that starts with a four. Jalen Brunson is going to get paid something that starts with the number four. That's what it is. I'm sorry. Julius Randle's contact extension is going to be something like Five years, $270 million. That's what Julius Randle is looking at. Because under the past contract, he's three-time All-Star, two-time All-NBA. Julius Randle's contract is going to be like five years, 270-something. It'll probably start with 40-something and end with um, high 50-something. Jalen Brunson's Jalen Brunson's extension is gonna be five years, two hundred million dollars, because he's only got one All Star appearance. Jalen Brunson's contract might start the first year might start with a three. After that, everything else is in the forties. And the thing is, the thing is, JJ, JJ, I'm going to use JJ for an example. JJ, you remember in 2015 when the Mets were hot and they had all this pitching and they needed one bat in the lineup and they made a trade and got the two guys from Atlanta, right? But they were not enough. But then they traded for a dude named Cespedes. And as soon as Cespedes, as soon as Cespedes put on blue and orange, you couldn't get our lineup out anymore after that. That's what this OG and Anobi trade has been for us. Like the Cespedes trade in 2015. Yeah, Uribe and Kelly. Yeah, exactly. 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 That's Burks and Bogdanovich. That's Burks and Bogdanovich, right? But that lineup, after we got Cespedes, out of here, bro. Out of here. Right? And if you're the Mets, I mean, or, well, if you're the Knicks, right? If you're the Knicks, if you're the Knicks, bro, not only do you have to, to, Keep OG because of all the stuff you gave up to get him. You invested in him. Now you got to pay him. Now you got to pay him. And chat and and chat for those that don't know, when the Mets made that OG and Anobi trade, i.e., when they made that um Cespedes trade, that team went to the World Series. They traded for an instant impact guy, and that team went to the World Series. And the Knicks just traded for an instant impact guy. I'm going to just let you fill in the blank right there. Just fill in the blank. And if you're the Knicks, if you're a Knicks fan, why would you even fumble this transaction anyway by, by being too tight with the purse, right? Because I can name examples of when the Knicks have been too loose with the purse, i.e. Evan Fournier, Derrick Rose, Kimball Walker, Nerlens Noel, Alec Burks. At one point, at one point we had $32 million Sitting on our bench, not playing. We had Fournier and Rose on our bench, not playing. A combined 30, I think it was a combined 31 million, 31, 32 million. That's still a lot. However you count it, it's still a lot of money. 
And now when it comes time to for OG and Anobi to, to get re-signed, we're like, eh, he gets hurt too much. Meanwhile, nobody's mentioning Hartenstein. Hartenstein got hurt in the uh, San Antonio game. Nobody's mentioning Mitch. Mitch got hurt again in the San Antonio game. Like we're mentioning injuries. If 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 we're just keeping it a stack, right? If we're just keeping it a stack, if we're concerned about injuries, then we have to start all over with a lot of people. I just clicked on J- JJ says there is no perfect player. Pay that man. Right. Right. Pay that man. Don't mess up the good vibes because we, you know, you want to get cheap. Right. Don't mess up the good vibes because we want to um, resign Derek Rose. We want Derek Rose to retire with us or something. We got to save those few pennies in case Taj want to come back. Nah, bro. Nah, bro. Nah, bro. Nah, we can't. Nah. Nah, we can't do that. We can't do that. And Kerry Cox says, ranked team luxury has payroll. Boston Celtics, 199. Denver, 190. Phoenix, 190. Minnesota, 185. Yeah, and if the Knicks want to get there, because right now I think the Knicks are at, what, 168, 172, something like that. If the Knicks want to get there, I, I can't remember. I can't remember the total right off the top of my head, right? But if the Knicks want to get to where Boston, Denver, where they are, they are going to have to pay this some type of payroll like this. Snipe says Deuce needs a new contract. Yeah. Deuce, I don't know what I don't know what Deuce was thinking. I don't know. I don't know what Deuce was thinking when he signed that that contract he signed. But he signed it. He may be happy. He may be happy with it. I tell you one thing for sure though, the next contract that Deuce get might start with a two. And Ivory 10 says, we were all surprised by it until he played 40 minutes the next night. Right, right. And I think the Knicks knew that all along. I I personally think the Knicks knew that Deuce would sign a contract under $5 million a year and quickly wanted about $27 million a year. You do the math. Three years, 13 mil. Yep. That's a bargain. That's a steal. That's a steal right there, y'all. I'm not going to lie to you. $13 million is a lot of money. $13 $13 million is a lot of money for a second round pick that hasn't played. Now, is he proven he's worth all of that? Sure. Right? But Deuce has three more years. His contract doesn't kick in until next season. So he's got three years of this $13 million to contend with. And also, not only 
not only do you sign OG and Anobi and not mess around, you have to do it ASAP because OG and Anobi, I think, is a unrestricted free agent. And I think they have his bird rights. They might have his early bird rights to, to go above and beyond what another team can offer. And so you know what that means. That means they can legit, OG can ask for the world and get it. If if the bird rights conversation comes into play, you know there's competition from another team. You know there's competition for another team. If, because if, if the early bird rights wouldn't even be a part of the conversation, if nobody was really offering him anything, that means the Knicks can offer. They wouldn't even have to use the early bird exemption for, for OG and Anobi. They could just throw him three years, $75 million. But OG and Anobi ain't taking that. Right? OG, OG and Anobi's not taking that. He's been playing under market value for too long. This is his one time to get the bag, and I don't think he's going to not try to get the bag. Ivory 10 says, Leon's son is his agent. That contract signed, sealed, and delivered already. Yeah, it's, yeah. Five years, $203 million is signed, sealed, and delivered, like Stevie Wonder said. For what that man offers the Knicks, uh, and, and quite frankly, quite frankly, I've probably seen only five Knicks historically that have impacted the Knicks in a way where you can't imagine life without that player. And that's where, where I am. I can't imagine my Knicks um, life without OG Ananobi. Just can't. And Pastor Jay says, uh, Dante and Deuce combined salaries 16 to 18 million over the next three seasons compared to signing quickly four years, about 25 to 30 million. Indeed. Indeed. Yep. 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 And that saving, that saving right there that you just mentioned. Yeah. That saving that you just, that you just mentioned that, uh, seven to 12 million saved is going to go on it. Go, it's going to be a part of OG's contract. And I don't know if y'all understand where I'm going with it. I honestly, I honestly can't see life without OG and Anobi as a Knicks fan. There may be only five Knicks ever that I legit couldn't imagine an upgrade. Most Knicks players on, on our roster over the years, we could imagine an upgrade for them, right? We can imagine an, an upgrade for them. When we had Zach Randolph, David Lee, all those guys, we were like, yeah, if we get Chris Bosh and, and Amari Stoudemire, y'all remember that? Man, if we could get Chris Bosch and Amari Stoudemire, yeah, we could upgrade David Lee and Zach Randolph, right? We could we could legit upgrade Stephon Marbury, who I love, by the way. Starberry, you my guy. Love you, bro. Starberry is my guy, right? But if I could have got a Kobe, an Iverson, a Ray Allen, um, um, a Steve Nash, others out of his draft, um, out of that, that draft class. Check please. And I love, and I love Starberry. Right, Allen Houston. I love Allen Houston, bro. He the nicest Nick that I ever met in person. The nicest Allen Houston, legit is the nicest human being sports-wise that I've ever met. 
right? A saint, right? Alan Houston, legit. Listen, man, I would, I would let Alan Houston take my grandmother to church, right? That's how nice that dude is, right? But if, <laughs> but if, if I could have got, um, Tracy McGrady, Vince Carter, Mitch Richmond, check please. Chat, y'all tell chat, y'all tell me this. Y'all tell me. Kerry Cox says, I believe the Knicks' first million dollar player was Spencer Haywood. I think so. I think so. I think he was. I can't remember if it were he or McAdoo, but I think it was Haywood. I think Haywood did that twice. I think he did it with the Knicks and then did it with the Lakers. Chat, tell me what Nick that you saw play that you could not imagine life without that player. Y'all tell me, tell me what Nick that you saw with your own eyes and rooted for, read the box score, followed his stats, rooted for him, rooted for, rooted for the team. Y'all tell me what Nick that you saw that you could not imagine life without that player. Y'all tell me. Miguel P says Pat. And Kerry Cox says Walt Frazier, Clyde Frazier. Hey, and, and Kerry Cox, I don't know if we're the same age or not. I don't know if we're the same age or not, right? But I'll, I'll say this. I was at school. It was like, I don't, I can't remember what time of the year it was, but, but I remember my, my teacher coming into class. I must've been about seven or eight years old, man. I remember my teacher coming into class and, and was mad as hell. I was like, Mr. Williams, what's going on? And, and this is the seventies y'all. This is the seventies. So don't judge me. Right. And, and I probably got some details wrong with the story. Right. But but I'm just going off memory, right? This because this was like what 50 years ago when this happened. I was like, Mr. Williams, what's going on? And Mr. Williams put his cigarette out on his desk. And he's like, go sit your ass down, Uncle Freezy. Why well, ain't got time? I was like, man, what's what's the matter? He's like, I done told you now, don't make me send you to the principal office. And when he said principal office, I got nervous because, you know, I was a little kid. My mother would have tore me up if I went to the principal office. I was a little shorty, right? And so the day gone by, day gone by, and the teacher from the Mr. Smith came by and pulled Mr. Williams out. He was like, and they was out in the hallway arguing. Like, yeah, yeah, you can make it. And me, I'm Uncle Freezy, right? Same person you see now is the same person. 50 years ago. So I go out in the hallway and I was like, hey, man, why y'all arguing? And Mr. Wee's like, hey, man, didn't I tell you to sit down for I sin? And Mr. Smith was like, you may as well tell him. And he showed me the paper. He showed me the paper. Clyde Frazier had got traded to the Cleveland Cavaliers. For, for, um, for Clemens, Jim Clemens. Yes, that Jim Clemens, Phil Jackson's best friend, Windmill Phil. Bricks Nation says, aren't you 40? I like 47. In the waist? <laughs> MS, are you, are, aren't you like 47? Yeah, around the waist. I'm trying to get down, bro. I'm, I'm. I'm dieting, bro. I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. So, so yeah, the, the thing is, the thing is, is 
is, and, and I know this sounds petty, and I know it sounds like I'm just talking just to hear myself talk, but I'm not. I can't imagine this team going forward without OG and Anobi on it. I just can't. Some things just fit like a hand in a glove. You have a defensive-minded head coach that wants to do all these exotic defensive thing or whatever, whatever, and they trade for OG and Anobi, and not only does he do these exotic things on defense that the head coach wants him to do, but he make it look easy. So not only does Tom Thibodeau want to run all these exotic defensive schemes and blase blah and, and this and that and this and that, and not only does OG and Anobi do it, but he do it with ease and other stuff. And if you're going to keep Tibbs, if you're going to keep Tibbs, then I can't see a world where OG and Anobi is not part a part of the future. James Harris says, um, Mark Jackson is a player, is a Knicks player that you watched and you could not imagine life without Mark Jackson. Chat, I legit thought y'all were going to say Rod Strickland. Nobody said uh, Rod Strickland. Anybody remember Rod Strickland? JJ says, I'm too young for that. I'm turning 37 in a couple of weeks. Hey, man. Yeah, man. Happy birthday, bro. Wayne is in the building. Salute. 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 Yeah, man, there are only a handful, maybe five players that I've ever watched put on the orange and blue. Maybe, maybe five. I, I'm thinking it's more like three, but I'm going to say five just in case I forgot somebody. Right. Clyde Frazier is I never thought I'd see today when Clyde Frazier was not a Nick. And Clyde and Clyde, if you watch him, bro. There are legit fans of you out here, right, that watched you since they were little boys, right? And I know sometimes we get negative and fussy in these live streams or whatever, but I remember getting a pack of Fruit of the Loom t-shirts and writing the number 10 on the back and writing Frazier name across the back because I couldn't afford a jersey. I'd be outside playing in my school t-shirts. With, with Clyde Frazier, I just drew it up like it was a Knicks jersey. And Snipe says, I became a Knicks fan in 94. Bro, that's 30 years ago. Snipes Entertainment. Snipes, you old, bro. Snipes. Snipes, you old, brethren. Snipes said he became a fan in 94. So the the a few okay so here are my handful of players that that I felt like life couldn't go on without this player right Number 1 is Clyde Frazier for me and and not and I didn't I didn't um dislike Willis I didn't um, um, dislike um, Earl the Pearl. I didn't dislike all the guys from that that seventy two, that seventy one, seventy two team, right? I didn't dislike any of them guys, right? I loved all of them. I even liked Windmill Phil, like Bill Bradley, all of them, all of them, Dick Barnett, everybody, right? But Clyde was my favorite. Clyde with Clyde was my favorite, right? It's just it's just part of it. Yo, you remember him? Remember Joe? <laughs> Kerry Cox. Hey, that's clutch, bro. That's clutch, bro. Yeah, man. That yeah, yeah, that's clutch. 
You remember Caldwell Jones? <laughs> but any, anyway, anyway. So Clyde is 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 my number one, right? My number two guy. Um, I'm gonna put him on the list because I said five. Because I because I said five. B. Willis, you remember Jerry Lucas? Man, I remember Jerry. Man, yeah, man, Jerry Lucas. So, so my list is is this: it's Clyde Frazier, Michael Ray Richardson. I love. Listen, I loved me some Michael Ray Richardson. I did. I loved, man. I loved some Michael Ray Richardson, bro. I ain't gonna lie, Pat Ewan. Pat Ewan, I can't see, I couldn't see a life without Pat Ewan. Right? I thought if we traded Pat Ewan, and I'm talking about in his prime Pat. I'm not talking about old man Pat. I'm not talking about over the hill, over the hill Pat Ewan. Because everybody in this, every veteran gets old, right? Right? I'm talking about like in their best years. Hey, yo, Turnbull beat me to it. I was just about to say Starks. Starks was next. When we traded John Starks, it broke my heart. Right? It broke my heart. Not to the extent that that trading Clyde broke my heart. Right? And I, I couldn't see a life without John Starks because... No lie. Did this is I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it a stack and maybe y'all won't believe it, but I'm gonna tell y'all the truth. John John Starks brought a toughness to the Knicks that we didn't have on deck. Starks and Oakley together brought a toughness to the Knicks that wasn't there before those two arrived. Right? Lewis Orr, Trent Tucker, Rory Sparrow. Daryl Walker, all those guys, they were not what you call tough. And they were tough, but but not 90s tough. Those guys were tough dudes, right? Truck Robinson and all of them, they were tough dudes, right? But no, they were not 90s tough. John Starks one night was going to fight the entire Denver Nuggets organization. I think it was Denver. It might it's some. I, I can't remember. It might have been Milwaukee. Somebody. John Starks was going to fight the entire organization. Charles Oakley was holding them back. Like, no man, no man. And I'm like, damn, you, yo, are you that mad that Charles Oakley got to hold you back, bro? Yeah, Henry Bibby with the afro. Henry Bibby had the afro. Yeah, man. I think that's the year. That may have been the year that, that Doug Collins was the number one pick out of South Carolina. Anybody For anybody that remember Doug Collins, he used to coach the Chicago Bulls. But before that, before that, I think he was like the number one pick in the draft or something. Or a high draft pick by the Sixers. They were like, the Sixers were like, like five and 77 for the season or something crazy. The Sixers were terrible and they wound up getting Doug Collins in the draft. But the reason why I brought that up about the reason why I made the OG and the point is, is certain players come along and fit so well that you don't want to gamble with the prospect of losing them and losing the mo- losing the momentum that you gained because that player was here. So g- give you give you an example. B. Willis, I give y'all Kerry Cox. I give y'all an example, right? Something something similar to this happened in 1992 with Xavier McDaniel. Y'all remember Xavier McDaniel? We we acquired Xavier McDaniel and didn't give him a contract extension and he walked. And then come to find out he was exactly what we needed going forward. And, and then we wind up trading. 
Yeah, we wind up trading um um Mark Jackson in order to get a small forward, Charles Smith. Go figure. Yeah. Right, right, right. Mr. Fitzroy is is right. X-Man was that guy. If you can imagine the toughness between Starks, X-Man, Oakley, and Pat Ewan, it was like it was like a moment meant it, it was like a moment, it was like a perfect moment. Right. And so you can say the same thing about an OG and Anobi. With OG is a Nick. I know he played six years with Toronto. I understand that. I understand that. I know OG has a championship ring with the Raptors from 2019. I understand that. But what I'm saying is, in the here and now, OG and Anobi is a Nick. He had an immediate impact on the Knicks winning basketball games, just like when Melo got here from Denver. An immediate impact. Pastor Jay says trade OG from a Cal Bridges to reunite the Villanova fantastic. Yeah, no. Nah. Um, to be honest with you. Defensively, Macau Bridges is half the player that that OG is. No disrespect, because in my mind, Macau Bridges is a heck of a defensive player when that's all he focuses on. When when Macau Bridges has to score and defend, he doesn't. His defense falls off and his offense falls off. It's like Tyrese Halliburton. Tyrese Halliburton was a heck of a defender when he didn't have primary playmaking responsibility. When Tyrese Halliburton took over primary playmaking responsibility, his defense fell off a cliff. And Miguel P says, <clears throat> Mikel is three times as durable. Yeah, yeah. The thing about, the thing about Mikel Bridges, though, is I don't know if he has an impact on any of the teams he plays for. I I, I look at Macau Bridges like when you go when you see a a band in concert, <clears throat> and then they pull the lights down low, and and the saxophonists come out, and do the saxophone solo, and then he go back in the shadows. To me, that's that's Macau Bridges. Right, we because and and you'll be like, yo, that dude played the heck out that saxophone, and then he in the back, you don't hear, you don't see him no more that night. Right, while OG and Anobi, when OG and Anobi is on the floor, when OG and Anobi is on the floor, he legit, depending on the matchup, is gonna guard the best offensive player one through four, regardless of who it is. Whether it's Siakam, Halliburton, Buddy Heald, uh, Zach Levine, Anthony Edwards, SGA, Luca. <clears throat> He's going to guard anybody and shut them down. That's his job, and, and that's his job because that's what he's good at. I return, he says, yeah, but that's the way OG looked on Toronto. No, he didn't. He No, he didn't. Bro, he didn't look like this on – he did not look like this on Toronto, bro. Um, When's the last time – when's the last time in recent memory you remember Toronto being 17-2 and two in 19 games with, with OG and Anobi?
like, like name a stretch of 19 games in Toronto with OG and Anobi that Toronto was 17 and 2. And on top of all of that, on top of all of that, if he was that good in Toronto, bro, why would Toronto have a 26-year-old on a trading block for two seasons in a row? They put OG and Anobi on a trade block. He was 24. The rumors surrounded OG and Anobi for years that they were going to trade OG and Anobi. Who puts a 24-year-old on a block if he's a franchise-type player? I want to give the Knicks some... Can we just give... Yo, can we just give the Knicks some credit? Can we just say, you know what? The Knicks are getting the very best out of OG Ananobi. And Ivory 10 says, you missed my point. OG looks blind in Toronto just like McCown looks blind. Oh, okay. 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 And Kerry Cox says, I wanted him two years ago. People were calling me crazy. Man, listen, I, I was I don't know if I was for giving up three first round picks for OG. Y'all know the guy I wanted. Y'all know I wanted a dude. His initials are PG 13. You know that's the guy that I wanted, right? Another elite wing player that had injury issues. But so what? But so what, right? The, the thing is, is if you get Paul George, if he plays 60 games and you go 40 and 20, if you go 45 and 15 with Paul George and, and, and the other 22 games, you can't go 11 and 11, that's not a Paul George problem. Think about what I'm saying. If you would have got Paul George, he played 60 games, we'd have been mad, right? I'm talking about as a collective, we'd have been frustrated. In those 60 games, we go 40 and 20, right? And then in the other 22 games, you go 11 and 11. Bro, that's 51 wins. That's 51 wins. As a baseline, as a as a baseline, that's 51 wins. The thing with OG and Anobi, if OG and Anobi next season only plays 60 games and we're 45 and 15, and we go 11 and 11 in those other games, that's 56 wins. I think so, at some point we have to count our blessings. We we have to we have to count our blessings, man. I'm for I, I I'm pro giving OG and Anobi the absolute bag. I'm pro bag for everybody. Turnbull is in the building. Salute. He says the the reddish arguments were so much fun. That seemed like just yesterday. Yeah. During the summertime, man, I pounded the table for I wanted Cam Reddish to be something so bad, man. I, I think I just wanted I just wanted the Knicks to have a legit small forward is really what I wanted. And for those keeping track, I was drinking um crystal light with lemon in it. Trying to do the trying to do the right thing, bros. And ladies, 
And Kerry Cox says Minnesota or Denver will beat the Clippers in the playoffs. Maybe. Possibly. I, listen, man, I'm not, yo, I'm not going to lie to you. I really want to get a feel for June basketball. Y'all remember how excited we were to have May basketball? To just be playing basketball in May? That was such a good feeling, man. And and now I know I'm reaching when I ask for, when I'm begging for June basketball. But man, June basketball, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the, the joint tips, yeah, man. The um um I put it in a shaker and I got I, I was drinking the crystallite tea and I was like, oh god, I could just it's just I got tired of it, man. So um then I bought the crystallite lemonade and I made um 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 I got the thing off Amazon where you pour tea into a container. And it makes the the um the the key the the um the circle ice cubes the ice spheres I guess is what you call it the ice spheres and I would dry and I would drop them in in that lemonade or whatever bro it was good and then I just stepped out from there and just started other flavors like grape and and fruit punch Turnbull says it's okay I was arguing for Siakam last summer Bim. And that's the fun part. That's the fun part of having a channel where everybody's involved. We can debate, conversate, argue over anything. Nobody takes anything personal. We just just in here, just just chilling out. In here, just chilling out. So. Let me see. I don't know if I did that. Oh, I did not. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. Okay. So here's a question I, 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 I've been wanting to ask y'all. I was going to save it for BK stuff, but I'm going to ask y'all. If Randall comes back for the playoffs at say 70% and has another subpar playoff performance. Are we going to crucify Randall? Are we going to crucify Randall for having a subpar performance in the playoffs, even though it'll be the second year in a row he was injured in the playoffs? Y'all let me know. I'm not going to guide the conversation. I just want to get y'all's opinion on it. And hey, Kerry Cox says Randall comes off the bench anyway. And Ivory said, of course they will. Come on, bro. Ivory T hey, Ivory 10 man, says, of course the Knicks are gonna do what do that. And JJ says, it seems like we're never gonna be able to judge playoff Randall. Um, the key word in that statement is playoff, in my opinion. The key word in that entire statement is playoff. Because before Randall, Noah Vonley and Kyle O'Quinn, Derek Williams, Henry Ellenson, Michael Beasley, even Mario Hazonia. Brahim says, no, I'm saluting Randall. Randall's my guy, y'all. I'm, I'm not going to lie. 
Randall is my favorite Nick. And so for the for full disclosure, so that y'all won't think that the conversation, so y'all won't think that I'm actually like moving the goalposts or flip-flopping or changing the conversation or creating a narrative. Man, Randall's my favorite Nick right now. Right? My second favorite Nick right now is yo, Marshall was in the building. Salute. My second favorite Nick right now is Dante DiVincenzo. Right. And then and then OG and Anobi. Those are my three right now. I'm riding with them. Those are my three Knicks right now. I'm riding with them. Right. I'm a ride or fly with them. Those are my three guys, Randall, OG, and Dante. And it's not because I think they're better than Brunson. No. It's not because of of you know one thing or the other. It's preferences. That's all. It's preferences. That's just what it is. Just full disclosure. And I, and I know sometimes I will steer a conversation away from Dante DiVincenzo. Like the other night, Dante DiVincenzo was four for 18 and not anyone talk about it. We legit could have won if Dante DiVincenzo knew what a basketball rim looked like. Right? But I ain't going to judge him, bro. That's my guy. Yeah, man. Hey, man. Randall, hey. Randall is here for it. Julius Randall is Julius Randall is here for it. So, and, and listen, I think the majority of y'all, I'm not even gonna lie. I think the majority of y'all, I think the majority of y'all, y'all favorite New York Nick right now is Jalen Brunson. Is Jalen Brunson. And it's because Jalen Brunson solved so many issues at one time. You can't help but be a fan. Have have Jalen have a heart strength for Jalen Brunson. Right? He solved the point guard issue. He solved the scoring issue. He um solved the star issue. He solved solved all those things. So if Brunson's your favorite player, I I, I have no beef with you with you. I just like Dante better. I just, yeah, I just, I just like Dante better. And it, it, it's not because of he's a redhead, whatever, or because he's Italian or because he went to Villanova or because he's an outsider came here with something to prove. Nah, none of that. Just, I like him. Miguel P says, I often injured front court needs to come off the bench. Even at 80%, we would kill the benches of opposing teams. Yeah. Yeah, I, I could see that. Miguel P, what I would say, though, is if our bench went back to the bench, we would still kill opposing benches. Josh Hart off the bench. Precious off the bench. I think Deuce off the bench. I still think we'd be, be, be killing um, other teams' benches. The, the unfortunate thing is our lack of depth right now is depleting our bench because so many guys are hurt. Ivory 10 says, Big Mitch. Indeed, it is very fun when Dante is hot, right? It's very fun when Dante is hot. I ain't gonna lie. Turnbull says, I said it when we signed him, and I will continue to say it. When we signed Brunson, the culture at the Garden changed, and we ain't we ain't ever going back. Stoked, not scared, Uncle Freezy Bem. Yeah, I, I feel you. I, I I feel you. I feel you on that. I think Brunson is a culture changer. I think Brunson is a culture changer. Right? I don't have anything against Brunson. I like Brunson. I think he's a mega star. I think I think he it I'm going to say this and it's going to sound like Nick's Homer talk and maybe we could talk about this for the next 20 or so minutes. 
next 15 minutes or so. I know it's late at night. And I know I'm talking to hardcore Knicks fans. I personally feel as if Jalen Brunson is the NBA MVP. The New York Knicks is in the building. Salute. I personally feel like based on based on past years, what people told me the league MVP is, I feel like Jalen Brunson is this year's NBA MVP. Based on what you tell me the parameters are. And we see, and the thing is, in these conversations, we can't keep shifting the goalposts based off what we like. If we're not being hypocritical, right? If we say, if we say he's the most important player or the best player on a very good team. Ask yourself, are the Knicks a very good team? Have the has this version of the Knicks gone into 2024 into a firefight with limited weapons? Did the 2024 version of the Knicks go into go into from January on, did the Knicks not go into their schedule down numerous weapons? And then think to yourself, did Jalen Brunson keep this team afloat while those weapons were down? Think about this. What if Giannis had zero help in Milwaukee? What would the Bucks look like? What does Tyrese Maxey look like? What does Philadelphia look like without Joel Embiid? Philadelphia went from the three seed all the way down to the seven seed without Joel Embiid. Imagine what Drew Holiday would look like in Boston if he didn't have his small forward, Jalen Brown, his power forward, Jason Tatum, or his center, Chris Tapps Porzingis. Imagine what Drew Holiday's season would look like. Imagine what Jamal Murray's season would look like if he had no Michael Porter Jr., no Aaron Gordon, and no Jokic. What would his season look like? What would Anthony Edwards' season look like without Gobert, Carl Anthony Towns? Imagine what Steph Curry's season would look like without Draymond and Clay. Oh, you don't have to imagine. I can tell you exactly what they were. The second worst team in the NBA. They wind up being in the lottery, getting Jonathan Kaminga, James Wiseman, and Moses Moody. But the Knicks, however... The Knicks, however, are on the verge of winning 50 games with Jalen Brunson. And I know what people are going to say. 
Oh man, Luca's the MVP. Yeah, yeah, no. Luca's a great player, but he has not had a better season than Jalen Brunson. Right, Sabonis. Sabonis has not had a had a better player, had a better season than Jalen Brunson. I'm sorry, Kevin Durant, Devin Booker. They not, they not having better seasons than than Jalen Brunson. Imagine if Kevin Durant was playing, had to play forty games without Bill Booker. And and some other guys. Imagine SGA had to play 40 games without J. Will and Chet. Imagine Luca had to play 40 games without Kyrie. Just saying, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, at some point as Knicks fans, and listen, I know I'm preaching to the choir, right? I listen, I understand that I'm preaching to the choir. But I'm preaching to the choir not because um, I feel that you guys are not there. I need you guys to help me. Help me understand how Jalen Brunson is not at the top of somebody's MVP ladder. When, when my Knicks fans, explain this to me how Jalen Brunson is not an MVP candidate. I just can't, I can't understand it. It's nice, I think you're right. I think you're right. Jokic are probably winning again. But I don't think it's fair. I, I don't I don't I don't think it's fair. Those guys have been healthy just about all season. Right. Yeah. Booker and KD um struggle um without Bill. Yeah. Yeah, and I thought the MVP um, award was um, given to the player that did the most with the least. And if that's the case, if if we're giving the award to a guy that that um, um, gave a Herculean effort, then how is it not Jalen Brunson? How is it not Jalen Brunson? It, it makes no sense. WAP all the time is in the building. I was saying the same thing last week. He should be top three, if not top dog for MVP. Yeah, the thing, yeah, you know what? And 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 WAPO, listen, you know what? If if he was top five, I would be like, oh, okay. The league don't know who he is. They don't watch him enough. So he's got to do it for another year. If he were top five, I would say that. Like okay, okay, you, you gotta, you gotta before, before you you put your feet up, you gotta, you gotta walk through the door before you put your feet up. But to not even be considered is a crime. Yeah, probably, probably. Yeah. I know one thing for sure. If Jalen Brunson is not an all NBA selection this year, the voting is rigged. If Jalen Brunson is not first team all NBA this year, you know everything is rigged. You know it's rigged. If Jalen Brunson is not first team All NBA, 
right? I don't care about Halliburton numbers. I don't care about Donovan Mitchell's numbers, right? I don't care about Kyrie Irving's, um, Damian Lillard. I don't care about their numbers, right? I think the top three guards in the NBA right now as we speak, Shea Gilgis, Alexander, Anthony Edwards, Jalen Brunson. Period. And I know Devin Booker, but Devin Booker has a ton of help and had to help all season. And I know I know Luca is a great player. Luca had help all season. Right? All the other names, um, Spider, uh, um, Dame Lillard, no, nah, oh, nah, they, they did not have a better season than Jalen Brunson. And Miguel P says, Perkins is the only media personality repping Brunson. Bim, yep. Turnbull says, Brunson, Edwards, Tatum, Giannis, Jokic. That's first team. There it is. Yeah, he said it. There it is. There it is. I concur. There's nothing else to say after that. Bim. There it is. And for those that don't know, Bim means exclamation point. Bim means nothing, nothing needs to be added. Bim. I don't need to say nothing else after that. After what Turnbull, after what, what Turnbull said, Bim. What? That's it. So I asked a question um, earlier today. Um, um, I know the, the 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 day shift people heard it. I'm going to ask the night shift people this question, and just to get a, get um, a feel for. Um, um, Chip says, "Where is Bimmy? Here he is." So that's Bimmy. I got to clean that up a little bit. That's a bad picture of Bimmy. Bim. Blue tears, orange tears, blonde tears. Bim. There he is. So I have a question for y'all. If T if Tom Thibodeau gets all of his weapons back healthy for the playoff run, do you have confidence in Tom Thibodeau that he can win the NBA championship? If everybody comes back before the playoffs, a hundred percent. Does Tibbs, does Tom Thibodeau have what it takes to win the Knicks an NBA championship? Yo. What's happening, Freeze? Hey, not man. I'm chilling, man. How you doing? Oh, man. You know, I, I seen you up here rocking. I said I'd get on with you before I lay it down. You know, I'm tired, man. I'm about as tired as a beat government mule. 
Oh man. Oh but, man. So, you know, I hadn't been on with you in a minute. Like I said, last time I think I was on the arc was wasn't nothing but a four by four. So, you know, here I am. <laughs> yeah, that's tired. That's tired, boss. Yeah, bro. Oh, yeah, when you when you when you that tired, bro. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. man. So, so so what are you thinking? Are you um if Tom Thibodeau gets all of his weapons back before the playoffs start, can Tom Thibodeau lead this team to a championship? Hey, what did uh KG say when he won a championship? Put it over there. Put it over there. <laughs> Anything's possible. Oh, okay. He's saying anything's possible. Okay, okay. I mean, you know, you know, this is coming from me. Yeah, I let it be known. I was, you know, I wasn't the biggest tip supporter, but you know, I've seen what he's been doing, especially how he's handled this season with all these injuries, man. You know, it's, it, it can happen. I mean, remember the same thing was said about Larry Brown. Yeah. yeah. You know, Larry Brown. I mean, you know, a lot of the ways. You know. Uh, he, he will, he'll never win the way he coached, whatever, 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 whatever. You know, I think if Tibbs, if the team was healthy and we had a couple of other pieces, um, I think we will be, I think we can pull up. I think we can win a championship, seriously. And there are some people in the chat, I can't see the chat because I don't even, I ain't even looking at it. I'm probably saying, you know, hell no, we won't go and everything no, it's, else. it's mostly possible. It's, yeah. it's mostly but it's a, it, positive, I'm it, sorry. Yeah, it's, it, it, you know, anything's possible. But like I said, man, the sun shine on the dog ass every now and again. So, right. you know, why why it can't shine on tears, you know? Yeah, I might uh, Brown won a championship. Exactly. You know, LeBron I said, well, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I said, well, they had LeBron, the blah, yeah, blah, blah. Frank blah. Vogel, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. No, but the thing is, some of the well, you know, the, the, you know, you had a contrarian. Mike Brown had Mike Brown. Was it Mike Brown? Was it? Yeah, Mike Brown. Mike Brown, Mike Brown won one. He was with oh. LeBron. Okay. Okay. And then, and then he won his others. The others he got when he was in uh, Golden State as an assistant. Yeah. But you know, my thing is, you know, you can see what Tears can do when he has the right players for the way he coaches for his system, his style of play. Right, you know, getting OG was was major, and I know a lot of a lot of cats, you know, upset because OG's hurt and all this. But the thing is, is OG's always been hurt. You know, I was against. I, I'm glad we got OG. I was against o, the. You know, when we were, you know, before we got him, people were willing to sell their soul and their right and uh, the and their right family jewel to get him. You know, and I was like, oh, you don't give up. You don't break the bank like that. So, you know, we came out. I just still think that you, we do need another small forward. Although we got Josh Hart, but yeah. But we do need another fall, small forward to help out, you know, uh, or we want to just put it as a wing, you know, and and go from there. But, you know, Burks and, and, and Bogey won't be here next year. Those, uh, those contracts are going to be moved and open up more money. You know, I can see that. It opened up more money so we can pay the cats that we need to pay. Right. And go from there. And you got others. And, and, then, and then backfill the roster with draft picks. Well, either that. Or I don't see us draft using all four of those draft picks, those first rounders. I just don't yeah, see it. We, we'll probably only get two this year, though. Maybe. It, it's heading to because the Wizards suck and the Pistons suck. And mm-hmm. in order for us to get those draft picks, they had to at least make the playoffs. Yeah, um, that ain't gonna happen. So. That ain't gonna happen. No, nah, yeah, man. like you said, we we still a better chance than a blizzard in the in the tank top. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, my thing is, is you know, I've, I've seen drafts before. I think CVS had us draft in Indiana Senate at one time. Um, I want to say I've seen another draft, another pick, uh, another draft board saying, uh, and that would be, and I said it before, it'd be bananas. I want to say it was Yahoo. Oh, excuse me. Oh, Giannis all down there broke my jaw. Um, yeah, he tied, boss. Hey, um, that we that it's a possibility the Knicks were after, it. and if it did happen, Hardwell would be the proudest uncle to walk the earth right now. Yeah. If we would have draft, if if his if the Knicks would have draft his nephew, yeah. that would be now that would be crazy. Um, but we'll see what goes on. You know, you got a lot of talk. You know, you got some. People want to see Mitch get traded because of the injuries and everything, get him out of here, whatever, whatever. 
you know, um, for me, Freeze, and I said it before, I think I said it, I said it on, um, with, I said it to you, um, that's just too far in the head to be looking for me. You need to right. be focused on the here, you know, sound like Luther here and now. Here and now. I would, I wish we had some type of fat R&B singer that curl just couldn't. Yeah, they're not roll, quite Jerry curl. All, it just couldn't. You yeah. know, roll all the way up. It, it was like a, a, a um, curl uh, like rats been sucking on it. Yeah, like yeah, like he took his curlers out too early. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or yeah. his bag had, or that plastic bag had a hole in it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he sleep rough. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. But yeah, I um, chat. What do y'all think? Y'all think? Do you think Tom Thibodeau can win a championship? If this team comes back completely 100% healthy. Sherwin, what's good? Right, Sherwin's in the building. Classic man says no. Okay. Okay. So, so what was your answer? I, I I can't remember what your answer was. Who, mine? Yes, sir. Oh, I said anything's possible. You know, I'm not going to count them out. Okay. You know, anything's possible. Um, but I do, I still feel we, there's still that one player. And I'm not saying we need to go out and get Booker. Because, you know, a lot of cats want to get Booker, but I don't, I'm not saying Booker. Perfect world, and I know I still a better chance of running through hell and gasoline draws. The person I'd like to get is already in New York. Uh, he's just on. He's just in Brooklyn, and that's Bridges. And I'm not saying because of uh, the Villanova thing. I'm saying right. because we should have drafted him instead of Knox. Right. You know, he would have been a key piece right then and there. You know, not u- using him as a superstar, but but for what he what he brings to the table. Um, right. You can win a, a championship with defense, but you got to score. Well, your defense creates offense, you know. Right, right. And so, all scoring is not done in the half court, too. By the ex- way, yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, perfect world if you could get Bridges, you know, um, and 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 bring him in with Tiz because I think Tiz, you know, Tiz love him. You know, you see how OG just fits right on in. It's like. Yeah. The hand, the glove, you know. In this case, it did fit, so we got it quick. Yeah, you know how you, it's like when you when you ask your parents for a bike for Christmas, like you seven years old, mm-hmm. you ask for a bike, and then you look under the tree and there's some mongoose. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh my god, they got me a mongoose. I got the mongoose with the mag rims. Oh, oh bro, with the with the mag sticking out on the side. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, yeah, that's that's what it's like. That's what that's what it's like, right? To to me, you at Tibbs ask for a, a small forward that can defend, and you go out and get him OG and Anobi. Yeah, I mean, that's something that I remember. Freeze, I had been screaming about that for the longest. Matter of fact, GI and I were both, I remember it was a while ago, GI was and I were on the same thing because I said, you know, how often, when was the last time the Knicks had a legitimate small forward? I ain't gonna talk about all three, I'm talking about a wing player, it's a legitimate small forward. When was the last time? Ooh. Yeah, Moby Dick was a sardine. That was the last time. So, you know. But, yeah, uh, I, I always thought, I, I always looked at Mellow as a uh, a jumbo wing, kind of mm-hmm. like, you know. I never looked at him like a a um, Vince Carter type small mm-hmm. forward. Yeah. I mean, but to get to get an OG, because, I mean, if. Earlier this year, if the trade would have gone through to get a Paul George, Paul George would have been perfect for how this team, for what, you know, was needed. Man, you got, you know, he would have been perfect as well. But, I mean, getting OG was 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 a definite shot in the arm. I just hate that he's, it's the injuries. That's the only thing I was ever concerned with with OG was the injuries. Not that he couldn't play. Man, go out there and lock him down, you know. But he didn't even play in the, when they won the championship in uh, Toronto. He was injured. So if you ain't alive, bro, I ain't, the injury don't even concern me, bro. I mean, I'm not tripping about the injury because no, no, no bro, I'm, I'm talking about that. I'm talking about that's yeah. my opinion, though. That's how I feel. Oh no, I'm no, not no, saying, I'm, I'm not going against what you're saying. I'm talking yeah, about yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'm riding with you on that freeze. You know, it is what it is. Injury's part of the game. 
Oh, he's always injured. Oh, he's always injured. But, you know, you can say the same thing for Giants fans. When you talk about Saquon Barkley. Saquon was injured a lot. People still want to hold on to him. Ooh, you know what I'm saying? That's a low you know? blow, bro. That's, that's no, I'm just saying. Low. I'm just saying. With New York, I, low, I, can low, say, bro. I feel like I got to get you back now, bro. Hey, I, I feel like I got to bring up. Hey, I, I can say the same thing about my, my squad. You know, we had Michael Thomas. He came out like gangbusters with his first four years. Look right. like he's going to be the greatest receiver of all time. And then after that, it was one foot, two foot. You know, another thing with the foot. Right. Something else with this, something else with that. You know, and it, it just happened. It happened to go. It happened to go the way it went. You know, now he's no longer in in, in a N.O., even though I did like can't go up Mike. But, you know, he was on the field. He was effective. But, yeah. you know, he didn't play for two years. So yeah. you got to you gotta pack him up, pack him in, get him up out of there. OG is going to give you, and he has a history. Okay. So at the most part, I think OG's played, what, 62, 65 games out of a season? Yeah. So if you're going to get 65 games out of the season and majority of the, that 65 you're going to get is in the playoff if, run. If he, plays, if he plays 65 games and your team be 50 and 15 when he play, mm-hmm. I, I think I'll take that. Oh, yeah, man. Sign me up. I'll take that. I'll yeah, take that. I, especially especially if, he, if he, you can get him into the playoffs. If he, if he can be healthy and he's playing in the playoffs. And, again, I know I said the if word. If if, if was a fifth, we all be full. I get right. that. Right. But, um, you know, you can't, you know, scared money don't make money, right? Right, right, right. Yeah, it to me, it to me, it's like the conversation when Cat used to be like, "Well, Randy Moss don't go across the middle," and you're like, "What? Why are you sending you the? Why would fool? you need to send him? Yeah, why would you send him up to across the middle? Why are you sending him across the? Why you send him across the middle? When he crucifying everybody going up the field, and yeah. he, he tells you, "Chuck it up there, dog. I get it." Yeah. Yeah, I mean it is what it is. You, like, that, you can't throw the ball downfield all game. All you need, all, all you need, Randy Moss to do is catch two of them things, bro. Mm-hmm. And the game over. It's, it's a wrap. Yeah, yeah, man. That that's what I'm saying, man. Like if OG plays 65 games and we win 48 or 50 of them games, bro. I, so what? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm yo. I'm I'm yo. I'm legit. Like yo. You know that man is only going to play 60 games, 65 games, 62 games, right? Go get an o, go get a backup for OG out of the draft. That's what right? I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I, that's 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 what I'm saying, Freeze. Get a backup Nobody out of the team. draft. Mm-hmm. Or maybe free agency. You get you a, somebody can bring in free agency to come off the bench that can spell some time for OG when he's down and then he comes back and we hey you firing off on all cylinders. Again. Right. Right. You know, we, we have Randall. We got a bag up for Randall and Precious. You know, oh, Precious, can't, man, Precious. Pres- Pre- this is Precious' best season of being in the NBA, period. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's the way you use certain player skill set. Because I know it was a lot of it was Toronto fans said, he's going to drive you crazy. You're not going to want him and blah, blah, blah. But it's because you had the man playing center all yeah. the time. So, of course, he's going to look bad going up against an Embiid or a Joker. Look at all that size and everything he's given up. Yeah. So you, but you put him at power forward, is, and, and now you're seeing what he can do and give him some time, he can be effective. So, yeah. you know, I, I, I don't know. You know, I, I, I know I have a throw, you know, as we say back at the crib, a throw it off way of looking at things, man. But, you know, I'm not going to get emotional or whatever. I, Roll into some Mr. Spock stuff, man. Try to use some kind of logic with it, man. And I mean, not everybody's going to agree with you. I still got to get you back for saying Saquon Barkley, though, bro. What is that, man? Oh, because he went. The, right. I think I think the Saints uniforms are ugly, bro. That's all right. That black and gold is nice. I like it. That ain't good. They they wear black and brown, bro. That's not gold. It's, That's brown. It's black and it's black and gold, man. Nah, come on, bro. It's black and gold. Um, um. Deuce I mean, but, was also injury prone. Mm, yeah, he did. Deuce, Dalton, Deuce, Dalton, Deuce, Deuce had his issues. Yeah, yeah, Dalton, yeah, but Dalton he, but, but, always but, was also injury prone. They yeah. had a backup named um, Ironhead. Ironhead and, Haywood. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but when but when Dalton here, you ran that rock. He was effective. He was so, all right. I, yeah, yeah, you know. Oh, he must be having flashbacks when he ran through y'all. No, you know, uh, you don't want to put up when you brought up Saquon Barkley, bro. When you brought up Saquon, it was but, a tough last, time, last time I checked, weren't you a, a, a Bears fan? So you can... Yeah, yeah I'm, a, I'm a Bears fan, bro. Okay. To my heart, die hard, bro. And it's yeah, not yeah. because of what people think. 
It's because we, we, we used to play this game called free for all on Woodlawn and everybody used to grab all the running backs. And, and so the, all the running backs would be gone. Cats would be like, I got Larry's I'm Larry Zonka. I'm, I'm, I'm Tony Dorsett. I'm Chuck Foreman. Mm. I'm, I'm Riggins. I'm like, they would name right, them. I'll be screaming. I'll be screaming. I'm Earl Campbell. Yeah. Yeah. They was like, yeah, I'm, I'm Earl Campbell and all these guys. And I'd be like, ain't nobody left. And you know who, who left, and they'll be like, Man, um, um, I don't know who left. And and Mr. Ronald across the street, he was like, Yo, be Walter Payton. You know, I was like, Walter Payton, who was that? And he's like, hey, Man, that's that young boy in Chicago, but he's gonna be something. <laughs> yes, he that, that, young, that young boy in Chicago gonna be something. Sweetness, even though, even though Dick did him dirty in the Super Bowl. Yeah, they did a dirty in the Super Bowl. They, they, they did a rather. Everybody got a touchdown. Bowl. Everybody got a touchdown except Sweetness. This man took you offensively. He was your main weapon offensively. Get to the Super Bowl. Don't even get a man a touchdown. Yeah, My man. He, he was a de- yeah. He was a decoy all game. Mm-hmm. He even fumbled in that game too, bro. By the way. No, I re- I remember watching that eighty five Bears. I remember that. Yeah, they, yeah, we own that. We own that that stadium. The Bears own that stadium that we beat the Patriots in. Mm, yeah, the, the team that played there wear like some kind of weird brown and black color. They ain't never been. To, I don't think they ever been to the Super Bowl itself. They might have gotten lucky and lucked up and won one, but yeah, and they used to have they used to have a quarterback named Archie or uh, RJ or something. No, oh, I'm talking about, talking about the, the black and gold who won a Super Bowl against you. Um, talking about the Steelers, not the Steelers, bro. You said, you said, uh, you said, uh, yeah, you're talking about black and gold because they're, yeah. So they're black and yellow, black and yellow. We black and gold. So, yeah, copycat kind of. No, no, we black and gold. They're black and yellow. <laughs> Yeah, man. I mean, I, I, could, I, could, I mean, I know you, you still kind of bitter after the last time y'all faced off against, you know, faced off against us, and you know, can't guard Mike was giving y'all the blues and everything, yeah, and you know, and that guy Alvin, AK, AK was giving them the, the, the blues, but that was then. Those better days. Now we got a scrub coach who can't win his way up a wet paper bag with a tank and four grenades. Pretty much, yeah. So you know, we're 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 in, we're in purgatory right now. So. Every every I think every team go through go through something like that. Oh no, but, but, not, the, but, ooh, not the way we about to go. We about to be the worst team in the South next to the NFC South. The Saints yeah. about to be the worst team in, next to the next to the Panthers. Man, we're gonna be a joke. You had the easiest schedule in the NFL, and you could even make the playoffs. Man, get out of here, man. So yeah, we're 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 gonna be garbage. Yeah, man. Yeah. Dumps well, the juice. So I, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get out of here. You got anything to say to to the chat, man? Chat, y'all mm-hmm. got anything before we get out of here? Uh, only thing I got to say, freeze is right now, man. It's just one of them things. Just it's with the injury, it's gonna be seesaw. It's gonna be a lot of seesaw action, and you just got to grin and bear it. I know we had two horrible losses. Uh, last game was winnable. You know, bump the refs. We lost that. Uh, the, the the Knicks lost that on the counter free throws, man. If we just had to hit free throws down the line, game was a wrap. You yeah, know, game would have been a wrap, even with with the questionable calls and, and the no call on um the no call on the and one that yeah on Bronson yeah should have had an and one that, and that would have been that would have been signed sealed delivered. But you know, so you just got to shake that off, man. And and when people when the cats come back healthy then we can do what we do if they don't hey this is squad we got we just keep going forward you're going to the playoffs so that's the main thing you're still building you're going to the playoffs and if you go to the you make it to the playoffs with all these injuries and and and, and you know do what you do and then you just got to make moves got to make yeah, moves next season and just keep it pushing right well all right y'all that was that man. We're gonna get out of here. Thank y'all for um for um rocking with us. Next morning drive at 9 a.m. is y'all. Peace, everybody. <laughs>